You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Ooh, that wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Or maybe, just maybe, it's the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Because, yeah, and it is a very short bus. Just telling you. And I am your captain for this evening. And you are my captives. <laughs> Hey, y'all, this is Grammy Mary here in Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, also on the RLM X or RLMRadio.xyz site, and the RLM TuneIn Radio Station, and the RLM Freaker Channel, and the RLM Internet Radio Station, and all kinds of RLM and num and num and num. And hey, if you just happen to have the RLM um, app, for your phone, you can listen there as well. Booyah! Booyah! And so, let's see, it is a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday here in Grammy Land and probably where you are too. I don't know. Is it still a wacka Wednesday? <laughs> it's a something. It's a something. And guess what? We had a full moon this morning. It was a blue moon. It was obviously rather chilly outside. I know, because I was outside <laughs> checking out the full moon. I had someone send me a text saying that, um, oh, man, the full moon is so cool. I was sitting there watching it while I was walking my dogs, and it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So I went out barefoot in my house coat. <laughs> and went and checked it out in between tossing the ball for the dogs because, well, dogs and the ball. That's almost as bad as squirrel. But hey, what the heck? It was fun. It was cold, but it was fun. Wee bit breezy, so yeah, I didn't hang out for too long, but ah. I did see over here on Fakey Book that Ben Swan is now back with... Um, uh, da, 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 with Ben Swan. <laughs> <laughs> Reality check. That's what it is. He is back as of today. I saw it on Facebook and I was getting ready to click like and it disappeared. Why? Because Facebook's a douchebag. That's why. But I do see the lovely Mary B was over here. Hey, Mary B. And I also see Weeda. Hey, Weeda, how you doing, hon? And let's see, over here in Twitter, I lost another stalker. Damn it all. I just hate when that happens. Well, not really. But <laughs> it's like this is a game. What the hey? We're all just kind of sort of playing. Hey, and Grimmy, just the barman, just tweeted me out over there on Twitter. Thank you ever so much, barman. You are just so awesome. And you're everywhere. You're everywhere. Okay, over here on, um, I also saw JJ's over here a little bit ago, too. So, hey, cool. Over here on this FN site, I see Grimner is over here, as well as KD Troxel and the lovely Miri B and Cowboy Tech. And let's see, yeah, Grimmy and me, and I have to be here in order to be able to see who in the hell's over here. And I see that Grimmy shared a call from Solomon when he called in Sunday. And I missed getting to listen to that, so I'll listen when I get done tonight. Hiccup. Wow, that was fun. <laughs> or not. What the hell? Okay. Um, the, over here on Mines. You know what? I forgot to share it over here on Mines. I've been kind of sort of loitering. Loitering. And posting a few things in the Natural Cures group over here on Minds. I really like that. There's all kinds of cool stuff that people are sharing to help you build your immune system so you can stay away from that nastiness that um, the CDC and the FDA and Big Pharma are saying that, oh, well, those are the best drugs for you because we have white coats. And we have this thing that, that it's got earplugs 
and it's got a rubber hose and it's got a really cold round thing on the end of it and that makes us look very professional so yeah mm-hmm right whatever you say oh well I love mines there's lots of really I mean there's there's some weirdness over here but you know there's weirdness in the RLM too I, I saw some of it earlier today y'all are weird <laughs> but you know what the cool thing about being weird is when someone calls you weird you just look at them and say eh, I'm just a limited edition <laughs> that'll learn them by golly so anybody over here on mines if you're listening in, hey there hi there ho there anybody over on Spreaker I'm not gonna be playing on the speak Spreaker thing and chitty chatting with you cuz God knows I have enough trouble with the ones that I've got okay I'm going to go ahead and um, close Twitter down because they just keep showing marijuana and it's like, really? Really? That's just not fair. So, I'm going to close it. <laughs> it's a pout. It's a pout. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and finally, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if... Um, you want to give me static because this is the one that I this is the one chat that I do pay attention to why because it's got barman and Grimner and the rest of the wonderful awesome crew over here and yes I love journey <laughs> oh I know Grimmy you're not crazy about journey you're not crazy about Kansas either and I like I'm not talking the state there I'm talking the group and I like both of them but yeah mainly maybe that's because I can sing along and, and I have them turned up loud enough that nobody else can hear me singing along <laughs> oh well over here in the RLM which is where you need to be right up top I see barman the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world closely followed by cowboy tech who is always hearing pleasant voices don't ever change those hearing aids, honey. I'm really glad that you're always hearing, ple well, maybe not always, but for the most part, you hear pleasant voices. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? He is the creator and barman's boss, although barman gets a little bit lippy from time to time, and then Grimmy has to tell him to settle down. I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey, how's your world going? And uh, the lovely Kate is also here from the great state of Florida. I have not been to a Florida link in a while. I'm going to have to check that shit out. Are they really being so calm, cool, and collected down there? I don't think so. I think I just haven't seen it. I also see Asmo is here. Hey, Asmo, how you doing? And looky there, the lovely Beth Z is also in the chat, as well as BTC Bob and Chal Sedoni. Got a double dip and a Chloe going on. Chloe, Chloe, yoo-hoo. I'm here, kind of, sort of, tormenting those that are along for the ride on the wheels on the bus that go round and round. I also see IB Don C is here. Hey Don, how you doing, hon? Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is also in the house, as well as JJ's from all the way from Scotland. Honey, I hope you don't have no breezes blowing up your kilt, because, man, that, from what I understand from men folk, they say that makes things go turtle. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I also see Juana Taco is here. Hey, Juana. Hmm, I don't know. That does sound good, but I don't know. Hmm, going to have to think about that one. Tacos. Hmm, do I have any? I don't have anything thought out to do that. Darn it. Besides, when I get done on the radio, I usually do leftovers because, yeah, I'm feeling lazy and hungry by that time. I also see Meister Brower's here. Party! As well as P. Bunyan. Hey, P. Bunyan, how you doing, hon? Timber! The lovely Rain is in the chat. Hey, Rain! Are you getting everybody just a little bit sprinkled? Huh? Sprinkled with her lovely raininess. RLM Fluke is here, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Trust No One and Vinny the Poot. Vinny, honey, um, mm, wow, you're really effervescent, aren't you, dear? 
Yeah. I also see Woodman. Wow, that's a double dose of that one right there. My Meister Meister and Woody. Damn. He's here and his evil twin. This should be interesting. Beetle! Hi, Beetle. How are you doing, hon? And Colfax 101, closely followed by Dakota and Dimma. I have to do those in two different octaves. Just, I, I don't know why. I also see Frumpy is here. Hi, Frumpy. And Gooberzilla just joined in. Hey, Goob. Looky there, Kozu is in the house, as well as the lovely Mary B from Down Under. Hey, Mary B. And Poxified Pon Popon Sauce is also here, as well as the cuddly one, Teddy. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the gentleman that did my intro for me. Thank you ever so much. The awesome Phantom. He's a Phantom. And you know what? I'm going to get to something that I saw over here. I th I don't remember. Let me scroll up and see if maybe I can see who it was that shared it. Um, Naughty Biatch. Ooh, that's a fun name. Cool. Okay, was it someone shared something about, or maybe that was over on Minds too. Could have been. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should just get there. Huh? Maybe I should just go to that link? And just, it's from the onion. Did you know that the Amazon warehouses stocked with 20,000 doctors in prepare, preparation for the healthcare launch? So you can order your own doctor? How cool is that? You want to play doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently in Seattle, saying the online retailer was attempting to get ahead of the anticipated rush, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos announced Wednesday that his company's warehouses have been stocked with 20,000 doctors in preparation for the launch of his new health care initiative. All right, you know what the first thing you need to do, old Jeffy babe? Hun, with your health care initiative is number one get rid of all those junk essential oils that you guys are selling those things are crap they ain't even good for perfume I know some people that got some and I smelled them and it's like damn damn I don't even smell damn yeah that's number one on your health care initiative you know if you really care about health but if you really cared about health it would be care about health initiative not health care because health care is basically dangleberry death care oh am i reading too much into it i think so as part of our mission to always be expand but that too expanding our selection of goods and services we will soon begin offering Amazon customers access to thousands of physicians, each of whom will be capable of prescribing a wide array of treatment options and can be delivered right to your door. Noting that Amazon also plans to keep more than 50,000 competitively priced nurses, physicians, assistants, and pharmacists in stock at all times. Pharmacists are not in the healthcare business. They are in the dis-ease management business. Ask a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. They don't care about your health. They're there to help manage your disease in the most financially productive way. That's what they're there for. As always, Prime members will have access to two-day clinician delivery. But those willing to wait a bit longer for their diagnosis can select the no rush option and receive 5% off their next purchase of medical professional. Well, how special is that? So if I'm a prime member and I don't push the no rush, does that mean that I actually get in at the time of my appointment or do I still have to wait the obligatory half hour to an hour? Because, you know, doctor's time is ever so much more important than mine. If the treatment you receive from the doctor fails to meet your medical needs, just print out a prepaid UPS label and send him or her back for a full refund. At press time, sources confirmed that Amazon had suspended online pre-orders after approximately 4,000 general practitioners were crushed to death in a forklift accident. 
Mmm. Wow. That sucks. That's going to make a real shortage in GPs, let me tell ya. Hmm. I think I will share this one. Just because. I'm still trying to figure out this, this water fox grimmy, and I'm not real sure if I'm impressed with it yet or not. Hmm. I'm kind of sort of leaning back towards opera. But, ah. Uh, let's see. Oops. <sighs> Stutter fingers, yes. Grim has grim fingers, I have stutter fingers. They are two different variations of the same dis-ease. Apparently, the connection between the brain and the fingers when it comes to interacting with a keyboard is not necessarily a secure connection. Once in a while, it gets a little bit loose and a little kind of zzz goes on, and yeah, then my spelling gets real creative. <laughs> I think you know how that works, don't you, Grim? Yeah. Oh, order yours now. But wait, there's more. Hey, I wonder if there is a but wait, there's more. You know, this is the onion, by the way. Just saying, it has layers and layers and layers. And a lot of times it gives you not so wonderful breath. <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> I got to get this shared over on the effing site just because y'all will appreciate it. Okay. And maybe, just maybe, I'll put it over on mines, too. Just because if I don't mind, it don't matter, right? Okay, let's see. What is that? Yeah. There you go. But wait, there's more. Okay, let me take a peek. See what's going on over here. Um, let's see. Hey, Grant. What, Beetle? Oh, you're listening with Marshall? Hi, Marshall. How are you doing, hon? Your dad's pretty cool. I don't know him personally, but from what I see in the chat, he's okay. Goob, 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 goob. Okay, yes, you're goobering. <laughs> Ooh, hey, awesome. Um, Oh, Waterfox, beyond its built-in security features, is for people who are pissed at Firefox for... Yes, very true, Grim, and I am pissed at Firefox for obsoleting a lot of my plugins. It's like, you sons of bitches, I really, really like those plugins, and then you had to go and fuck with it. Oop, oh, my first F-bomb, so early in the show. Damn it! For those of you that have tender ears... Oops. <laughs> the wheels on the bus go round and round. Round and round, round and round. Okay, let me... <laughs> oh, man. I really should not go off my meds. <laughs> Speaking of meds, I know, what a segue. I'm so good at this. <laughs> this is from the New York Times dot com. It's from a couple days ago. And, uh, you know, it's because the FDA is so concerned. They are so considerate. They are so caring about the life of lab monkeys. Citing deaths of lab monkeys, FDA ends an addiction study. Now, they really are concerned about those little monkeys. Now, us bigger monkeys that have no tails, or if we do have a tail, it's the swishy, swishy one that... You know, I see some girls in them high heels walk around in them swishy, swishy things. And it's like, holy smokes, girlfriend, if I walked like that, my back would be so out of place. Apparently, though, the deaths of four squirrel monkeys used as subjects in a nicotine addiction study have prompted the Food and Drug Administration to shut down the research permanently and to establish a council to oversee all animal studies under the agency's purview. So now, not Food and Drug Administration, but the Fraud and Death Administration now has a council to oversee the studies that have all of us animals involved. 
See, they don't have to get consent from you because they consider you an animal. I am not an animal. What movie's that from? Huh? Sports fans? Oh, well. It is clear the study was not consistent with the agency's high animal welfare standards. This is according to Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Your high standards, huh? High welfare standards. Yeah. Right. Apparently, Dr. Scott Gottlieb is the agency's commissioner. And he said this in a statement on Friday. He also said that these findings indicate that the Fraud and Death Administration's animal program may need to be strengthened in some important areas because, you know, those monkeys that don't have the tails are getting a little rambunctious and they're not playing by our rules anymore. Dr. Gottlieb has called in an independent investigator to examine the agency's animal research programs, starting with those at the National Center for Toxicological Research in Lake <laughs> Fort, down there in Arkansas. Vinny, it's your neck of the woods, honey. Are you a lab rat? Or are you a, a monkey? Hmm? I, I know you're a Vinny and you got a pooty issue, hon. Pooty poo. You know what a pooty poo is, don't you? Talk to Rodney Carrington. He'll tell you. <laughs> oh, apparently this is where squirrel monkeys are housed. Wow. They have squirrels and monkeys. How cool is that? Apparently the 20 or so study animals will be transferred to a sanctuary, the commissioner said. Oh, is that kind of like that wonderful little sanctuary down there in Cuba? Yeah, that one that... Uh, Dangleberry said, um, no, not Dangleberry, Trumpelstiltskin, he said he was going to leave it open. Yeah, that sanctuary, that Club Med down there in Gitmo, is that the one? <laughs> oh, darn it all. Okay, never thought the music difference between, oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Frumpy, you support them girls? Oh, oh, Grimmy, that's not from the Sex Pistols song, hon. <laughs> that's from um, Elephant Man. I am not a monster. I know, my British accent sucks. What can I say? Okay. Um, da -da. What is that? Uh, working on... Da -da -da -da. I'm trying to catch up here what... Uh, oh, Eagles Journey and Bob Seger. Oh, and Kansas. See, I like Bob Seger, too. I got to see Bob Seger in concert. He's pretty cool. Bob Seger and Sweet all at the same time. It's like, damn. Okay, back to this article. Down in Arkansas. Federally funded re medical research that relies on animals has been contentious for years. Hmm. The National Institutes for Health has banned the use of chimpanzees in biomedical research and has retired, oh, retired, yeah, we know how what that means, <clears throat> mob, uh, retired hundreds of lab chimps, some of which have been moved to sanctuaries. Uh -huh. The NIH continues to finance research on other non-human primates for studies of neurobiology and metabolic illness and other ailments. Um, non-human primates. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not going to touch that one. Uh, not mm, Black's Law Dictionary. <gasps> FDA researchers are continuing other primate studies. Yeah, hi, primate. The agency said um, that although Dr. Gottlieb said he wanted to reduce reliance on them. Yeah, because, you know, you got so many primates running around loose already, and they're getting on buses, and they're pushing buttons, and, you know, we ain't doing anything that a monkey couldn't do. Seriously. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Watch out. You ever seen Planet of the Apes? Pay attention.
Apparently, the suspended study had begun in 2014 and was designed to inform agency officials who have expanded oversight of tobacco products, re uh, regulation of e-cigarettes, and alternative nicotine delivery devices. You know, honey, if you wanted to know how addictive that shit is, just talk to me. <laughs> I could tell you. Yeah. <sighs> Those cancer sticks are, yeah. They are kind of, mm-hmm. Apparently, the research was supposed to measure the effects of nicotine on addiction. <laughs> this was mostly on young squirrel monkeys because, you know, you can't find those young little hoods with the, the white t-shirts and the pack of ciggies rolled up in the sleeve anymore on street corners. So you got to go and get squirrel monkeys. Mm-hmm. Although they also included some adults because, you know, you got to get them while they're young. Get them while they're young. While you can still mess with the synapses going on in the brain. That's what you want to do. Researchers taught the squirrel monkeys to press a bar to get a dose of nicotine. Is that a puff puff pass in clinical terms? Apparently, after they became addicted, the scientists lowered the doses and observed the effects. They beat each other to death, didn't they? Apparently, they started with a group of 24 monkeys, but by the end of last summer, four had died. Three from um, anesthesia, anesthesia given while catheters were put in, ow, and one from a type of gastric bloat. What were you doing to these monkeys besides the, damn, ow, that sounds very painful. Patsy, another squirrel monkey in the study, nearly died, nearly died while under anesthesia on July 20th of last year. Patsy stopped breathing, but veterinarians were able to revive him. Patsy is a guy? Jeez, it's no wonder they're messed in the head. You don't call a boy Patsy. Unless they're a Patsy, which basically is what we are. Ugh. Apparently, the mishaps drew the attention of many animal rights activists, mm -hmm. including the celebrated expert Jane Goodall. Oh, Jane, you're such a Goodall. Yeah. All you animal rights activists, save the monkeys, save this, but don't give a shit about that baby because that baby's inconvenient for me. I was having a good time. It's not my fault they were poking fun and I took them serious. Get that thing out. It's just a... It's like a, it's a, it's leeching off of me. Yeah, you people have that kind of mentality. And then you say, save the monkeys, save the whales. I don't have a problem with save the monkeys, save the whales. But how about if you want to save babies, save all the babies. Not just the ones that you find convenient. Apparently, in a September letter to Dr. Gottlieb, Dr. Goodall accused the researchers of performing cruel and unnecessary nicotine addiction experiments on the squirrel monkeys. Yeah, they've been doing that to us for years, honey. When are you going to step up on that shit? Hmm? In September, the FDA suspended the studies and started investigating treatment of the animals. Oh, this will take a good, oh, 15, 20 years. Because, you know, they have a committee. <laughs> and that's just the way that shit works. We have a committee. And we meet every... And if you don't have a quorum, well, you just can't make decisions. And somebody had to get their nails done. Yeah. Apparently, they found numerous deficiencies, although the agency has not released an inspection report with details. Because they're in committee. And this takes time. Apparently, Anthony Bellotti, who is the president of White, Coast, White Coat Waste Project, which enlisted Dr. Goodall's help, praised the agency's actions. We applaud the FDA for ending these wasteful baby monkey nicotine tests and for retiring the primates. Honey, you do know what they mean by retiring, don't you? Haven't you watched any mafia movies? Duh. Jack Henningfeld, who is a professor of behavioral biology at Johns Hopkins School, disagreed with the decision to stop the study. 
These studies are done to address ser really serious questions about the nature of tobacco addiction. From Dr. Hemden Field, this is research in serious service to humanity. If there was an accident leading to the death of someone working in global warming research, you'd correct that situation, not stop global warming research. You'd say, we are going to do it better with more safety and even more care. No. No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. Huh. FDA. Yeah. Federal Death. Fraud and Death Administration is really much more appropriate. And I can't remember who it was that I heard say that at first, but <clears throat> yeah. Fraud and Death. Um, da -da, what's this? Ooh, J. Dredd found a Freudian slip by... I saw some video with San Fran Nan and her not-so-happy face. Oh, my God, I didn't think that woman could look worse. But she does. When she has a not-so-happy face, you know, when she's very, very cranky and she's sending those dagger-dagger-glare-glares thingies? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see, where was I at? Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Much better. Yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, windmills. Hey, have you seen those way cool windmills that look like trees? Those are cool. There's, it's a company in France, I believe, that makes them. I want to put a couple of those in my yard. I already have trees. These trees may as well be really productive instead of just dropping leaves and, and bean pods in my yard that I have to rake up all the time. I know, I'm whining. Okay, I'm going to get this shared over here on the FM site as well. Just because. Hmm. Yeah, we'll do this one. Because it's bad juju. We can't do that to the monkeys, but we can do it to people. Because people don't count. Yeah. Hmm. We're the other primate. I think I'll write that over here on mines. There you go. Okay, back to my pocket I go, because not only did I have that wonderful little ditty, but I also have this one from the CDC, and you know, those ass-hattioles are uh, in collusion with Big Pharma, and probably the military-industrial complex as well. Well, there ain't no probably about it, yeah military industrial complex I actually I know off on a tangent squirrel moment get my tinfoil hat out I really honestly believe that um, this new flu that's going around especially when you see the things where you know those that have had the flu inoculation are spreading way more flu virus than those that naturally get the flu yeah um, I think this is germ warfare and I would not be one damn bit surprised if that's half of the shit that they're playing tic-tac-toe in the sky with. Just putting that out there. I'm not paranoid. <laughs> it's not paranoia when they really are out to get you. Just saying. So, this is also from the NewYorkTimes.com. Dr. Brenda Fitzgerald, the CDC director, resigns over tobacco and other investments. Huh. Two tobacco links. Hmm. Apparently, the director for Center of Disease Control and Prevention, no, they don't want to prevent it. They want to control the disbursement of it and then prevent you from getting any kind of relief other than, you know, six feet under. They, they prefer that because, you know, culling the herd and all. Apparently, she resigned Wednesday, today, 
in the middle of the nation's worst flu epidemic in nearly a decade. Be afraid, be afraid. Yeah, there are people that are dying from the flu. I can't make light of that because, yeah, that's not cool. How many of those people have had their flu shot? And they died from the flu. Not cool. Apparently, um, she, she did this because of her troubling financial investments in tobacco and health care companies that posed potential conflicts of interest. Note how when you are a member of the government, it's considered a potential conflict of interest. And yet, and yet, if you are one of the general public, the other GP, it is a conflict of interest that would wind up with you being in a lovely little cage and possibly three hots and a cot. Although, not necessarily three hots, but you get a cot, maybe, that's not bug infested. Yippee-i-yay. Apparently, Alex Azar, is that how you say it? I don't care. The newly appointed Secretary of Health and Human Services, <laughs> yeah, announced the resignation of the direct of yeah of the director, Dr. Brenda Fitzgerald. An agency statement cited her complex financial interests that have imposed a broad recusal, limiting her ability to complete all of her duties as a CDC director. Yes. Oh, you do it all the time, Grimmy? Okay. Um, Kate, I, I see your little thing here, too. I don't know. I didn't listen to the... I don't do State of the Union speeches. I haven't done, I haven't listened to a State of the Union speech in 15 years, maybe? 20? I just, there, no. No. It's like watching the Grammys. You got all of these people in the same little club and they're being ever so self-congratulatory and standing up. It's a, it's like Catholic Church, only there ain't nothing holy about it. Well, okay, Catholic Church, there really ain't a whole hell of a lot holy about that either. I, maybe that wasn't a good one. <laughs> Apparently, the statement continued, Due to the nature of these financial interests, Dr. Fitzgerald could not divest from them in a definitive time period. After advising Secretary Azar of both the statuses of the financial interests and the scope of her recusal, Dr. Fitzgerald tendered and the Secretary accepted her resignation. Well, isn't that just awfully special of you, honey? I think you get a cookie for being so step up. No, no. Mr. Azar, a former executive with Eli Lilly, <laughs> made the decision on his third day running the sprawling HHS agency. A former executive with Eli Lilly. Wow, doesn't that just make my butt pucker? Dr. Anne Shuchat. Shuchat? What? A, what? What the? Where do you guys, do you guys just like spin a wheel and get these weird ass names that I can't pronounce? Is that what, and y'all got to work for the freaking government? What the hell? Apparently she's a veteran official with the CDC and was named acting director. Aren't they all acting? All the world's a stage and they're all just playing their role and trying to milk it, milk it. Milk it. Y'all are milking it worse than William Shatner did in Star Trek. Just saying. Apparently, she is also a veteran. Oh, she's a veteran official. Yay. And the position that she had filled before Dr. Fitzgerald took office. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She has had prominent roles in many of the agency's emergency responses to disease outbreaks and vaccine programs around the world. Oh, so is she, um, has she been read into the whole, 
we own the patent on Ebola and like 27 other vaccines. She's been read in on that shit, right? This resignation was announced less than a day after Politico reported on Tuesday that Dr. Fitzgerald, 71, had traded in tobacco stocks even after taking the position at the public health agency. The tobacco trades were small. Dr. Fitzgerald bought between uh, $1,100 and $15,000 worth of stock in Japan tobacco in August. This is according to her financial disclosure forms before she signed her ethics agreement. <laughs> they really sign ethics agreements? Are those Do those ethics agreements say, I have none? Apparently, she sold the stock as promised in October. Well, okay, she sold the stock. But, before assuming the post, she also had investments in major tobacco companies, including Reynolds American, British American Tobacco, Imperial Brands, Philip Morris International, and Altria Group. Altria Group? Hmm. Those were also sold in October, along with many of her other holdings. Wow, she got some serious cha-ching, didn't she? The former Georgia Health Commissioner. <laughs> okay, she had holdings in all of that shit while she was the Georgia Health Commissioner. Where do they grow tobacco? <laughs> Never mind. She was appointed to the federal agency last July by Tom Price, a fellow Georgian who served as Mr. Trump's first HHS secretary. Until he, too was forced to resign under fire for traveling extensively on private jets and expensing more than $400,000 for those trips to the government. I wonder how many or how uh, big the expenses are for old San Fran Nan and all of her trips. I recall reading something several years ago about how she always takes a private plane, always has a fully stocked bar, always. I mean, it's like, really? You're getting on his ass. Although, yeah, this is pittance. You take a penny and you cut it down into a little sliver, one hundredth of a penny, and that 400,000 is that one little one hundredth of a penny compared to the rest of the government's spending. Okay, so you saved us one hundredth of a penny. Woo! I'm impressed. Apparently, Mr. Price's investments in health-related companies had also come under scrutiny while he was in the government. Because, mm, you know, they're all intermingled. It's, it's worse than an Arkansas family reunion, I tell you. All them damn people are interrelated. You walk into FDA or the NIH or the HHS, and you hear banjos in the background. Don't bend over. Apparently, in a September ethics agreement, Dr. Fitzgerald said she would divest from many stocks, many stocks, that might pose a conflict of interest. Many and might. Yes, those lovely little vague terms. The other investments included CVS Health, Quest Diagnostics, ABV, and Zimmer Biomet Holdings, among others. Oh, among others. That's what they say when they don't want to list the real biggies. But she also said that she and her husband, Dr. Thomas Fitzgerald, were unable to divest from some holdings because of legal or contractual restrictions. Since when do you guys care about legal or contractual? Unless it cuts into your pocket, then I could see why you would care. Apparently, those were GW Ventures and Greenway Messenger, which are limited liability companies formed to invest in Greenway Health LLC, which is an electronic health information company, and um, Isomune, 
Isomune, which is a biotech company focusing on early cancer detection. Yes, they want to detect it early so they can milk you longer. <coughs> Apparently, Dr. Fitzgerald, <coughs> excuse me, pledged to avoid any CDC work. <laughs> Don't they do that anyway? She pledged to avoid any CDC work that would affect those holdings, drawing criticism from demon craps who said such recusals would limit her effectiveness. Oh, honey, like she was going to be effective anyway. Hello? In December, Senator Patty Murray, the ranking Democrat on the Senate panel that oversees the agency, expressed concerns that Dr. Fitzgerald's recusals on issues involving cancer and opioids prohibited her from dealing with two of the biggest health problems in the country. Oh, honey, you know, when they deal with those two, it's dealing under the table. That's how they deal with them. It's like, okay, I will let that slide. Give me that money under the table. Oh, you perform really well under that desk, darling. You just come right on back down. That's how they deal with those issues, hon. And even as she divested from many holdings in her health-related companies, some members of Congress continued to express concern that those investments could compromise her positions on a variety of agency matters. No. It is unacceptable that the person responsible for leading our nation's public health efforts has for months been unable to fully engage in critical work she was appointed to do. <laughs> you really believe that? God dang, you're more naive than I was. Holy shit. Apparently, Dr. Fitzgerald's tenure was unfortunately the latest example of Trump's ad administration's dysfunction and lax ethical standards. Oh, wow. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Ooh, was that a racist remark? How about talk about the chemtrails calling the clouds natural? Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's just so cloudest of those chemtrails. Apparently, Dr. Fitzgerald's predecessor at the CDC, Dr. Tom Frieden, issued a statement that suggested that the latest investments causing concern were made by a portfolio manager without Dr. Fitzgerald's knowledge. I do understand how that shit works. Because I don't understand a lot of that crap. And so, therefore... I have a thing that my 401k is, and they come around about every quarter, or at least once a year, but it used to be every quarter. And they would say, so do you like where everything's at? Oh, well, yeah, I'm getting my statement, and yeah, I'm not losing money, so yeah, it's okay. And then they invest in whatever they invest in, and it becomes like this magic thing. I just don't understand it. And I don't want to understand it, quite frankly. So I can see how that, yeah, but y'all are holding her feet to the fire for something that someone else done. Oh, wait. No, y'all do that already anyway, because it's somebody else's fault. It always is. Apparently, in August, financial disclosures show that she purchased stocks in several companies that might conflict with her activities at the agency. Might. Including Japan Tobacco, the drug maker Merck, and... Humana, the health insurer. Yeah, health insurance. Talk about a scam. You know, we're going to charge you this much money so that in case you have an adverse health event, that's what they call those nowadays, you know. If you have an adverse health event, then you just submit the proper documentation to us and we will reimburse you a certain amount. It won't be nearly as much as what you're getting billed, but but by the way, you just keep paying those astronomical premiums because, yeah, we're here for you. <laughs> sure you are. Mm. 
course, the records do show that she sold those stocks in October. Okay, I'm just really, no, nah. I'm done with this. It's like, really? I'll let you, oh, Dorky Lynn, Dorky Lynn, you're in and you're out, you're in and you're out. Honey, you and Alan need to really fix that. Um, oh, okay, you watched it last night? Oh, okay. What? Oh, okay. Oh, and some standing ovations and sweet. Hmm. You know, they always have standing ovations. It's just that a lot of times, especially when Dangleberry was doing the State of the Unions, and it looked like a bunch of trained seals. They're up, and they're down. And then they're up, and then they're down. That's that's what it looked like. Just the little YouTube clips that I would see, because I can usually only stomach about a minute, minute and a half max, and then it's like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Y'all are making me crazy. Er. I do need to put that er in there. Okay. Let's put this over here, too. Wow. Someone in government has ethics. Who the funk? <laughs> Okay. Stutter fingers. Okay, got that on mine. And I'll put it over here on this effing side. And then I will move it along to my next article. Hopefully a more positive and fun one. Although I did kind of sort of have fun with that one too. Because, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll just do this. <laughs> I look, Grimmy, I can't tell you enough how much I absolutely love those little emoticons over there on the effing site. Because they make my, my sharing links so much easier while I'm on the radio. Because, well, you know, stutter fingers are us. Hmm. Okay. Um. Lisa B. I see you, Lisa B. 97. <laughs> I hear you, Goob. It's like, damn, you know, I, I, 90 sec, of course, that's usually about how long it takes me to change like a little one's poopy diaper. And so that's kind of my threshold for the gag reflex to kick in. <laughs> Whoo. Okay. Oh, oh, Lisa B. sharing pretty pictures. Cool. Okay. I know. I'm supposed to be on the radio. I'm supposed to be actually paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> you sillies. Do you really think I do that? Uh, okay. Oh, I got to do this one. Just because <clears throat> I started reading it, and I, or I read the headline. I got to admit, it's a headline that grabs me. Um, but, um, this is from M.N. Hopkins. Oh, Stranger in, yes, Stranger. Oh, see you later, Mary B. Have fun, sweetie. Love you. Okay, this is from uh, mnhopkins.blogspot.com. Stranger in a Strange Land. It's from January of 2013, so they knew this a long time ago. Vaccinated kids have two to five times more diseases than unvaccinated ones. Doesn't that make you feel special? Um, this is, it was posted... January 2nd of 2013, but it's from the Free Health Alliance um, that was originally posted October of 2011. Preventable vaccine-induced diseases. Apparently, a German study released in September of 2011 of about 8,000 unvaccinated children, newborn to 19 years, show vaccinated children have at least two to five times more diseases and disorders than unvaccinated children. 
The results are presented in the um, oh in the chat below, and there is a um, a bar graph up above too. Um, the data is compared to the national, or yeah, compared to the National German KIGGS health study of the children in the general general population, and most of the respondents to the survey were from the U.S. Ooh, the data was collected from parents with vaccine-free children via an internet questionnaire by VaccineInjury.info and Andres um, Bachmar a German classical homeopathic practitioner. Now the independent study is self-funded and is not sponsored by a large credible nonprofit or government health organization with political and financial conflicts of interest. Ah, my goodness, I'm running into lots of conflicts of interest this evening. Hence, Bachmar relies on Google ads and donations for revenue. Each one of the 8,000 cases are actual cases with medical documentation. Three other studies had similar results, according to Bachmar, and are reported below, which cool. Apparently, um, no study of health outcomes of vaccinated people versus unvaccinated has ever been conducted in the U.S., by the CDC or any other agency in the 50 years or more of an accelerating schedule of vaccinations. Now over 50 doses of 14 vaccines given before kindergarten and 26 doses in the first year. This was, mind you, back in 2011, these numbers were compiled. So this is prior to 2011. Those numbers have gone up on the vaccinations. Most data collected by CDC is contained in the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, and um, that's VIRS, and it is generally thought to contain only 3 to 5 percent of reportable incidents. Why? Because do you know that they don't record the ones from little ones up to a year? They don't want to hear those. This is simply because by some immediate reactions are reported, uh, some immediate reactions are reported by doctors, but many are not admitted to be reactions to the vaccine because, well, then the doctor would also be liable, and so he's not going to report that shit. Most importantly, the VIRS numbers are only immediate reactions which I would place within a few hours to a few weeks. Long-term vaccine-induced diseases and disorders are not recogni recognized by parents or doctors when these conditions develop perhaps a few months to five years or more and would never be realized to come from multiple vaccinations. Because, you know, each vaccine has just under the allowable amounts and actually over the allowable amounts according to the EPA for drinking water but just under the allowable amounts according to the FDA that's each vaccine but they don't take into account or maybe they do maybe the fix is in but you add vaccine on top of vaccine on top of vaccine on top of vaccine and that builds so each one adds more and more and more of those neurotoxins that are used to help with shelf life. Really? Uh, I'm getting ready to drop an F-bomb. I can feel it. I can feel it. Hmm. The comparisons of health of vaccine-free children with the health statistics of the general population are the same as comparing unvaccinated with vaccinated. This is simply because the general population of U.S. children are nearly 100% vaccinated. Only four of the unvaccinated 8,000 responded with severe autism. That's 0.05%. And these were said to be high mercury cases. 
On the other hand, I had noticed that the results showed about 1% rate for autism in the unvaccinated over three years old, about the same as vaccinated children. So I asked Bachmar why the data does not show significantly less, and he told me that he had invited many autism groups and internet autism lists to participate and thus skewed the results accordingly. So if the true rate is 0.5%, I calculated that only 40 extra respondents above the true average number responded yes to autism. It would skew the results by a factor of two. So if the true rate is 0.25%, only 60 additional response, respondents above the true average number of the 8,000 responded yes to autism it would skew the results by a factor of four. So it would not take many respondents from these lists to skew the results significantly. And maybe, just maybe, that was intentional. Skew the results. The only other bias in the study may include the fact that parents of unvaccinated children are obviously concerned about the health risks of vaccines and are more likely to make other healthier choices such as feeding their children a much better diet and using more natural remedies and using fewer pharmaceuticals. Ding, 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 ding. Now. Half of the U.S. children suffer from chronic diseases and disorders, and 21% are developmentally disabled. Yet the public health system always uses the sacred manta, mantra, vaccine preventable diseases, when referring to their top public health achievements of mass vaccination. I think we should be talking more in terms of preventable vaccine-induced diseases. Yeah, I think so as well. And then there's a whole bunch of, yeah, data and charts and graphs and, yeah. Okay, come on. So no, no, no. Grammy, are you using a BB gun again? <laughs> oh, man. I am so glad somebody else saw them looking like clapping penguins. Good God. They really... <laughs> Oh, yeah, you know what, Woody? I have an autistic nephew. He's a highly functional uh, Asperger's, I think is what my sis said. And I don't think it was just from the vaccines. I think it was also from the ADHD shit that they put him on as well. Because he was actually fine until, ooh, about four or five years old when they put him on ADHD. Ritalin. And then it was like, he just went shunk, downhill. So, yeah. It's not just vaccines. It's also a combination of all the other fun shit. Because children can't be hyper. They're supposed to sit down in a corner and shut up. Really? Do you not know children? Put them outside. Let them play outside. Outside is a good thing for children. Especially when they're that active. I put my children outside a lot when they were like that. <laughs> and they played. And they had fun. And occasionally they ate dirt. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's when they eat those little things that look like Tootsie Rolls. That's not a good... Don't be eating the dog poop. Hey. So, let me get this put over here on this effing site as well. Hmm. Hi, T.D. Sanders. I see you, sweetie. How are you doing, hon? You have been sharing some really awesome stuff. I don't check out FN very often because 
actually at work I don't check out a whole heck of a lot. I check out the RLM. I've even shut off Facebook at work because it just something is messed with Facebook. And I'm an admin on our Facebook. Actually, I'm the only admin left on our company Facebook page. I haven't posted on there in months. <laughs> so I just shut off Facebook because it makes everything else drag. I don't know what the hell's going on with it, but it's making everything else drag. So, yeah, I have RLM up. I have Minds up and I do YouTube. <laughs> That's pretty. Other than that, I got all of my business shit that I'm usually pretty busy with. So YouTube is for listening while doing paperwork. Boof. Okay. I'm going to share this and then find me something else fun. I need to find something fun. Okay, which one? Um, yeah, that one. Okay. Um, I do have another one that I was going to get to, and then I kind of I got squirrel distracted. So, um, okay. I don't remember who shared this. Um, I think I saw it over in the RLM earlier today, actually. I know it had to have been today because it's dated for today. Uh, dun, dun, waiting for it to open up. There it is. So. This is from disinfo.com. <laughs> I think this, I think Grimmy might have shared this. Um, and I think it was in reference to Hansel. <laughs> I'm not positive. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Grim. Uh, psilocybin might just help you not be a Republican douchebag. <laughs> I love the headline. They get me every time. So, okay. So what this study is technically saying is that psilocybin has been demonstrated to reduce authoritarian tendencies. But in America, same fucking diff. It also seems to help reconnect people with nature, which falls well within the no fucking shit category. Oh, I'm going to get dropped lots of F-bombs. Booyah! But hey, it's science. This obvious thing that we've always known has to be officially demonstrated. I approve of all of this research. Legalize it, y'all. Hmm. So, psilocybin, the active com uh, compound in magic mushrooms, shrooms, <laughs> could make people feel more connected to nature and less likely to endorse authoritarian views. This is according to new research from the Psychedelic Research Group at Imperial College London. Hey, they get to have a psychedelic research group? What does it take to volunteer for that? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Grimmy. The new study published in the journal um, Psychopharmacology is the first to provide experimental evidence that psilocybin treatment can lead to lasting changes in these attitudes. Dude. Okay, I have to admit, I have never done shrooms. But I've done acid. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> that was years ago when I was young and dumb and it was a lot of fun. Um, study authors Taylor Lyons and Robin L. Carhart Harris, oh, I should say hyphen Harris, write that our findings tentatively, tentatively raise the possibility that um, given in this way, psilocybin may produce sustained changes in outlook and political perspective. Here, in the direction of increased 
natural or nature relatedness and decreased authoritarianism. Wow, nature is the opposite of authoritarianism. Who'd have thunk? Psychedelic drugs have been associated with anti-authoritarian countercultures ever since the hippies in the 1960s. Geez, and I wonder who started that shit. Huh. The previous study that surveyed 1,487 individuals found that people who had used classic psychedelics like LSD and magic mushrooms were more likely to report that they enjoyed spending time in nature and were more likely to see themselves as a part of nature. You know, when you're having a good time after taking a little bit of uh, acid and you're just kind of sitting out there and yeah, you do kind of sort of become one. <laughs> Okay, maybe that was just my experience. <laughs> Another study that surveyed nearly 900 people found that psychedelic drug or psychedelic drug use was associated with liberal and libertarian political views. Not liberal, not, not the current liberal. Maybe the uh, liberal of like 30 or 40 years ago that I kind of sort of identified with because it was like that liberal was A, you do your thing, I'll do mine. So long as you ain't hurting anybody, you're forcing your thing on me, I'm good with you. You know, that was my kind of liberal until somebody hijacked it. Apparently, higher levels of openness uh, to new experiences and greater nature relatedness as well. But, Lyons and Carhartt-Harris, one, or maybe I should say hyphen, is that like Ladasha? Oh well, completely other story. They wanted to know whether psilocybin use actually promoted anti-authoritarianism and nature relatedness, or whether psilocybin use was a consequence of it. Oh, and the rest of the post is over on SciPost. So let's just go check it out because now I'm really curious. Because it's like, oh looky there. Shrooms. <laughs> okay. So let me get down to where's it at? Where I had stopped. Da da da. Okay. The new <clears throat> excuse me, the new study compared seven participants with treatment resistant major depression who had received two oral doses of psilocybin to seven healthy control subjects who had not received psilocybin. I'd hate to be one of those seven healthy control subjects. <laughs> do I have to pretend to be depressed? I don't think I could do that. The researchers surveyed the participants about their political views and relationship to nature prior to the psilocybin sessions, then again at one week and seven to 12 months follow-ups. The participants who received psilocybin treatment uh, showed a significant increase in nature relatedness one week later and the change was sustained at the seven and 12 month follow-ups. Before I enjoyed nature, now I feel part of it. Before I was looking at it as a thing like TV or a painting, but now I see there is no separation or distinction. You are it. That's what one participant told the researchers. Now, the participants who received psilocybin treatment also showed a significant decrease in authoritarian attitudes, which was also sustained at the follow-up. The researchers also observed a reduction of depressive symptoms in these participants. See? It's like once you become one with nature, it's like, dude, the wind goes up, the wind goes down. <laughs> I could be a really good hippie. <laughs> ah, 
there was not a significant pattern of changes among the participants who had not received psilocybin. Duh! That's because they were sitting over in a corner pouting. What the fuck? I didn't get shrooms. Apparently, unlike the previous cross-sectional studies, the experimental design of the new research allows Lyons and Carhart-Harris to draw some inferences about cause and effect. However, the study's small sample size is an important limitation. It is also possible that psilocybin treatment decreased authoritarianism and increased nature relatedness indirectly by reducing depressive symptoms. Well, if you're no longer depressed, you no longer feel as though you need someone to come fix it. And the someone else come fix it is a major component in belief in author authoritarianism. Believing that someone else can fix it. No, they can't. It would be hasty, therefore, to attempt any strong claims about the causal influence due specifically to psilocybin at this stage. So, um, are you guys going to have an even larger study? Are you needing volunteers to participate? <laughs> I think I know a few people that would probably volunteer to participate. Just saying. Put that there. Um, okay. Shrooms and tequila? Oh, good God, I couldn't imagine doing both of those. Tequila's bad enough. <sighs> oh, oh, dang it, Chloe. Don't be telling me it's a cooler moon out there right now because I'm stuck inside. <laughs> My leash is not that long. I can't see. Damn it. That's right, Grimmy. No one is coming to save you. You must save yourself. The aliens are not going to come and save you. <clears throat> you must save yourself. It's just that simple. Hey, Chloe. I'm jealous because you can see the moon. I see the moon, the moon sees me. Remember singing that when you were a kid? Or was I the only one that did that? <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, I see this thing over here on FN site. And I just, just right at the very beginning, if you were raised on bologna and drank Pepsi and played in the dirt, got your butt spanked, had three TV channels, and had an outside um, antenna. School started with the pledge. Had a bedtime. Rode in back of a pickup truck. Recorded songs. Yada yada yada. Blank. Ba, 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 ba. Drank from the hose. Yeah. They go. I did all that fun stuff. But you know what? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I listened to a Dr. Bergman video last night, and um, he had said that you know the difference. Um, between baloney back in the day and baloney now is baloney back in the day did not have all the nasty, nasty carcinogenic bullshit thrown in there. I mean, yeah, you had chicken, li chicken lips in there, but you didn't have carcinogenic and, and hormones and, and GMOs and all that other fun shit in there. So baloney really was baloney back then. But nowadays, you don't want to touch that shit. You don't want to come within 10 feet of it. Ew. Okay, so. Moosey, you're signing up? Sweet! I'll pick you up, hon. We'll go together. How's that sound? I would definitely volunteer. <laughs> Beth wants to volunteer too. Sweet. <laughs> oh. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I need to put this over here on mines too. Because that, that would be a good one for over here on mines. Um...
<laughs> oh crap, and I still stutter finger. Hate when that happens. Yes. I see I've been paged. Um You know, I don't remember saying sir or ma'am a whole lot. Actually, I didn't say much sir or anything like that until I got to be an adult. It was always mister or so-and-so's mom or so-and-so's dad. Rarely did did we say sir or Yes, Mr. Ream. No, Mrs. Hicks. Yeah, that kind of shit. <clears throat> school. Ugh. I learned a hell of a lot more <laughs> once I got out of school. Like, I really learned that I didn't know near as much as I thought I knew. And I'm still finding that out. Well, on a daily basis. Okay, it's getting late enough. I need to go and check out the pig. And I see they still have the big bite me going on over here. Pig says, bite me. Y'all are just so loving over here. Okay. Word of the day. Grammys. Just another self-righteous smug fest of genetically defective malignant narcissist from Commiewood. No, it's Horleywood, honey. Not co Well, you could call it Commiewood, too, but... I think Horleywood is probably more appropriate. In the quotable quotes section, China's decision to allow monkeys to be cloned in order to facilitate future cloning of humans raised the question of why the Chinese people would need to be cloned in the first place. At some level, you wonder what's the point. They recently had a look-alike contest in China and everybody won. Ah ha 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 ha. Thanks, Argus Hamilton. Ha 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 ha. I'm not sure I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool, Beth. Yeah, that's it was. Yeah. <laughs> Grammy, why does that not surprise me? That yeah and what? were more your style. <laughs> huh. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> that really makes sense. Okay. Oh, they wouldn't let us take shop either when I was in school, Beth. I was actually the first girl in my hometown that took mechanical drawing. And I took that in, um, Seventh grade. And then they didn't have another girl take mechanical drawing for like three years. But I was first one. And they kept saying, that's not a class for girls. And I went, excuse me? Excuse me? But yeah, we couldn't take shop classes. We could do art. We could take cooking. And needle crafts. But yeah. Woody, you'd do shrooms? <laughs> okay, in the Tasty Tidbits, Michael Moore, America must be cleansed of its white male privilege. Oh, Michael, honey, I'm so glad you volunteered. Apparently, the far-left filmmaker demands replacement of culture that brought us Trump. Well, you know what, honey? The reason why Trumples is in there in the first place is because y'all were so egomaniacal and assholios. And you just made the rest of us, you know, it was like, seriously, the pendulum, pendulum swung so far that direction that it just, it had the momentum to go all the way to the other direction. And I'm hoping that somebody steps in front and you could volunteer. You have enough girth you could probably stop the pendulum as it's coming back and maybe just stop it right in the middle and get that damn bad boy to stop swinging. You have the girth, Michael. You and Rosie, step up. Take one for the team. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Apparently, oh, this is from uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Infowars.com. 
apparently the far left filmmaker Michael Moore called for America to be cleansed of its white male privilege during a speech in New York last night. Well, Michael, honey, yeah, looking at this picture, uh huh, you still have the girth. I'm not fat, I'm just full of shit. Honey, it's leaking <laughs> out the top. Moore apparently was giving an address at the People's State of the Union event in Manhattan. I don't know what peoples you hang with, but sure, I don't hang with your peoples. Apparently, this was derided by its critics as having nothing to do with the people and everything to do with mega-rich celebrities lecturing Americans about how to think and vote. Honey, we stopped listening to you. Now we laugh. Did you not notice how bad the Grammys ratings were? People don't give a shit. They are out of gas. Give a shit. Apparently, he was asserting that the removal of Trumpel Stilskin and Mike Pence from office, okay, Pence can go, Trumpel's is still entertaining, would still, uh, still won't be enough, Moore said. Well, that's because you need to take one for the team, honey, you and Rosie O'Donnell. We must remove and replace the system and the culture that gave us Trump in the first place. See, I told you, you're stepping up, you're volunteering to take one for the team because you are part of that culture that led to Trump in the first place. Just saying. Apparently, he didn't fall out of the sky and land in Queens, Moore continued. He is a result of us never correcting the three original sins of America. A nation founded on genocide, built on the backs of slaves, and maintained through the subjugation of women to second-class citizenship and economic disempowerment. Okay, honey, if you are so concerned about all three of those things, why don't you go on over to, uh, oh, there's lots of other countries where it's way worse. Not saying it's a bed of roses over here unless you consider it's a bed of roses that's been cut down and all the thorns are up, thorny side up. Then it could be a bed of roses, all prickly and drawn blood, which you're a massive prickly. <sighs> Goes on to say, as we seek to rid ourselves of Trump, we must also cleanse our American soul of its white male privilege. Okay, <laughs> see ya. Don't love you. Bye bye. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, cause man, that's a hell of a crack. Oh, and it's voracious greed. How much you worth now, Michael? Chubby boy. I know I'm calling names. How, sh how hateful of me. I, I just, I have less than zero respect for this guy. Less than zero. Apparently, this is not the first time that Moore, whose anti-Trump Broadway show was a complete failure, has specifically targeted white people. Has he not looked in a mirror lately? Honey, you're more pasty than I am, and I'm a Grammy cracker. <laughs> Seriously. Apparently, back in August of last year, he celebrated a future where white men were the minority because America's demographic shift will make it easier for demon craps to win future POTUS selections. Yada, yada, blah, 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 blah. The angry white guy is dying out. Aww. And the Census Bureau has already told us that by 2050, white people are going to be the minority. And I'm not sad to say, I can't wait for that day to happen. I really don't give a shit what color your skin is, honey. I really don't. And, you know, what's really sad is even if everybody was the same skin color, y'all would find a reason to hate someone else. Skin color don't mean dick. Back to this. <clears throat> Apparently he said that uh, he hopes that he lives long enough to see it because it will be a better country. Oh, hun, you keep packing on the pounds and you ain't gonna. Just going by statistics, sweetheart. Apparently the filmmaker who previously compared Trumple Stilskin supporters to rapists 
followed that up in December by bragging about how white people were outvoted in the Alabama Senate selection. Once again, have you looked in a mirror? Moore's call for the removal of Donald Trump will still skin. And okay, you can take Pence. I don't, here, he can take one for the team. I don't care. Like I said, Trumples is still entertaining. I'm, I'm finding him amusing yet. I don't know how much longer that will last, but I find him amusing in some perverse way. <sighs> Apparently, this has been an ongoing obsession ever since the selection with zero success. Back in March, the far-left blowhard called on demon craps to declare a national emergency, claiming that POTUS Trumpel Stilskin and his staff are guilty of espionage. <laughs> okay. All right. Despite supporting Bernie Sanders during the selection campaign and criticizing Shitlery Clinton for being a warmonger, and a Goldman Sachs-owned career politician, Moore suddenly endorsed Shitlery and has been a major driving force behind the anti trumpel stilskin hysteria ever since. Yada, 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 blada, blada, blada. Michael Moore, you just, you just weird, dude. And not in a fun way. What? Um... Oh, the Grammys is an Illuminati show. Yeah, I don't doubt that one damn bit, Moosey. I haven't, I haven't seen those, and yeah, I haven't watched any of those award shows in forever, forever. Um, well, Grammy, if Grammys rocket chair is Illuminati, I think you need to spell it different. Because I might be illuminating the naughty side. <laughs> Whoo. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I do I do illuminate my naughty side from time to time on here. Okay, most of the time on here. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What's that? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. So, oh, wow. They got a shitload of... To, uh, this date in history. Cool beans. So, this date in history, the 31st of January, the last day, which, by the way, just to let you know, the month came in with a full moon. Month is going out with a full moon. That's a blue moon and a lunar eclipse. Woo! Be afraid or not. Just have a shift. Shift to the cool side. Just pretend like you're taking psilocybin. You can talk yourself into it. Be a cool ride. I'd have fun. I can. I may have to do that. I may have to pretend that I got. I could talk myself into it. Trust me. <laughs> okay. This date in history: the thirty-first of January, seventeen forty-seven. The first clinic specializing in the treatment of venereal diseases was opened at London Dock Hospital. Dock. D O C K. Oh, that could have been a Freudian slip. <laughs> that's right <laughs> Illuminati is yeah that's pretty much I'll agree with that Grim <laughs> okay this date in history the 31st of January 1865 in America General Robert E. Lee was named General in Chief of the Confederate Armies this date in history, the 31st of January, 1865. Again, the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution was passed by the U.S. House of Representatives. The amendment abolished slavery in the United States. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is saying, y'all are slaves now. We don't care what color your skin is. Y'all are slaves now. By the way, those of you that think that it was only people that are were born uh, staying in the Easy Bake Oven of Life a little bit longer, so they had that natural tan thing going on, they were not the only slaves. Irish, who were pretty pasty, pretty pale, the only spatterings they got is when they looked up and as God was painting the other babies, the paint flecks got on their face. 
freckles. That's what my dad used to say. Irish were a lot of the slaves too. So don't be giving me this shit of it with just the blacks. It was the Africans. It was the Irish too. And a lot of other folk that was slaves. And it wasn't just the white man that had slaves either. Just putting that out there. For those of you that want to be all, we need to pay reparations, okay? Pay some reparations to me too. Because I have ancestors that were fucked over by that shit. I don't know of anybody in this country that's... Move along, Grammy. <laughs> 31st of January, 1893. The trademark Coca-Cola was first registered in the United States Patent Office. whoop dee doo And it actually had Coke in it. This date in history, the 31st of January, 1919. Jackie Robinson, first African-American baseball player in the modern major leagues, was born. In other words, back then, Jackie Robinson, first black American baseball player in the modern major leagues. Get rid of the fucking hyphen. <clears throat> I hate that hyphenated shit. That's one of the few things I truly do do detest. This date in history, the 31st of January, 1940, the first social security check was issued by the US government. Yay, and it's been downhill ever since. This date in history, the 31st of January, 1976, Ernesto Miranda, famous for the Supreme Court ruling on Miranda versus Arizona, is stabbed to death. Fuck, that sucks. Get a Supreme Court ruling named after you and you're stabbed to death. That sucks. Hmm. And lastly, this date in history, the 31st of January, 2000. We made it! 1999 wasn't the end. Or was it? And this is just an alternate reality. And they said it's the Mandela effect. Nope. World came to an end in 1999. Y'all just didn't realize it. In any case, 31st of January, the year 2000, good old boy Johnny Rocker was suspended from Major League Baseball for disparaging foreigners, homosexuals, and minorities in an interview published by Sports Illustrated. Ah, uh, I just hate when shit comes back to bite you in the ass. Huh, okay. Well, that was a rather interesting this date in history. So, now I'm going to go back to my pocket because I know I do have a few more things in there. Yes. Oh, a Florida story. Sweet. Welcome back, cowboy. Yes, Frumpy, all the Goyim are slaves. Actually, Goyim, from what I understand from something that I read, now this is something I read on the Internet, so it must be true. Goyim actually translates to cattle. Isn't that lovely? Hmm. Oh, we have a plug-in. Plug-in blanket fort and shrooms. Sweet! <laughs> okay, I gotta check this shit out. From the great state of Florida. Come on. Don't just keep giving me the swirly. Ooh! ABC7.com, a loaded grenade launcher found among donated items at Florida Goodwill store. Wow, must not, mm, that brings a whole new meaning to Goodwill. Well, I decided that I would have Goodwill towards man, so I brought my grenade launcher to the Goodwill store. <laughs> Apparently in Brandonton, Florida. Talk about one heck of an explosive donation, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Authorities say that a grenade launcher loaded with a live grenade was left with other donated items at the Florida Goodwill store. The Brandonton Herald reports that employees at the Goodwill store near Tampa reported the weapon on Sunday. What, they didn't go out and play with it? 
<laughs> my brothers would have. They'd have gone, cool. Yeah, if one of my brothers would have found that, oh, hell yeah, nobody would have heard about it. Nobody. They'd have taken it home and, and had some fun. <laughs> Apparently, the Manatee County Sheriff's Office says that the store manager told deputies that the grenade launcher had come in a shipment from another store several days earlier. Huh. The employees at the other location said that they sent it along because they didn't know what it was. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? Deputies say that they disposed of the active grenade in a hazmat locker. <clears throat> That's a good place for it, hon. And uh, the launcher was stored in the agency's property room. It's not clear who donated the items. Well, hmm. Hmm. I, hmm. I wonder how many uh, of those deputies are going to play with that launcher later. Well, you know it's in evidence, and you have to check it every once in a while just to make sure that everything's kosher. <laughs> I... Okay. Where do I want to go? Um... Oh, I have so many things in here that there's like uh, concentration training, how to 11 exercises that will strengthen your attention, which is like, wow, do I really want to do that? I'm really enjoying um, having a squirrel moment. Um, let's see. Oh, let's check this one out. Oh, no, I think I will do that one Friday. Okay, this one is from The Guardian, and it's actually from September 21st of last year. <coughs> I live a happier life now. I'm free of the trappings of modernity or modernity or whatever. Is that really a word? Staying healthy is not about doctors, ambulances, and technology. I'm in tune with my body and use healthy eating exercise and herbs to keep me in balance. And yesterday, or last night, I was watching a video of Dr. Bergman, I know, squirrel, and he was dealing with a gal that had brain damage, um some kind of an accident or something, and she has she has the doctor has pretty much said she's going to be in a wheelchair the rest of her life. She's never going to get any better. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Well, this girl is 19 now, and she's been seeing Dr. Bergman for a few months. And, uh, or while I was watching these videos. And at one point, you know, because a lot of it is, uh, whatever had happened, it had malformed her skull. And so part of the treatment that he was doing was trying to reform the skull properly so that the brain was not cramped and not allowing it to do the signals properly. And if you actually watch the progression of the videos of, of her treatments, and I'd, I think I saw up to 57 treatments, and I'd, I'd watch the first few and then I'd jump to the 57th because, yeah, I'm one of those people. Um, plus, I was getting tired. But in any case, he had used a tuning fork as part of the treatment, and it was used to stimulate a generation, or yeah, generation of more neural pathways in the brain. And it was amazing to watch because you could. I mean, these these were like ten minute videos, and to watch them from start to finish, and to see how this girl who had initially at the start of them she's got her hands all clutched up and up against her chest and by the end of the appointment and getting her back adjusted and her neck adjusted and doing exercises and doing different things like he has a um, a black and decker it it was a saw but he has a different attachment on the, that that kind of does a, a a thumper effect on her feet 
and he would do that as a stimulation to her uh, to get her brain to to recognize the rest of her body and start making neural pathways it was amazing to watch from the first to the 57th how far she had come and how you could see that she actually was interacting with him where she pretty much was in a vegetative state at the start and then bringing her to that point and it was like this is really cool you know and and what sent me on this tangent was the in tune with the body and he was explaining I mean you need to check out Dr. Bergman videos on YouTube um, and how he used a tuning fork to help stimulate neural pathways and people that are brain damaged and that the rest of medical society has said nothing we can do you're just stuck with this child that you're gonna have to change diapers on and all this other fun shit I mean this girl was gaining control of her limbs her extremities she was actually interacting with people which she was not doing at the beginning it's amazing it's amazing what you can do when you stay out of the accepted medical process. But back to this article, because I don't have much time. So, <clears throat> when people learned of my decision to reject modern complex technology in favor of older, slower, forgotten ways, the first line of inquiry usually involves health care. Considering its importance to our lives, this is hardly surprising. Yet because of its emotive nature, which of us, after all, doesn't have friends or family needing glasses or hearing aids or stents or prescription drugs? It seems difficult to have a calm, objective discussion on the subject. And the more concerned and curious inquirers often ask me, what would I do if I got seriously ill? While the long answer is complicated and nuanced, honestly, I don't know. It's easy to live by your values when times are good, much harder when you're having a stroke or dying of cancer, which I also watched in several videos today on different cancer treatments that are not accepted by the American uh, Medical Association or the FDA or the NIH or the National uh, in Cancer Institute or yeah there's lots of different treatments out there but research 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 in any case one thing that I can say with more confidence is this if we continue pursuing this political ideology of mass industrialism which has given us ambulances and dialysis machines and wheelchairs and antidepressants not only will we continue to harm our physical emotional and mental health leading to even more people needing such things we will also wipe out much of life on earth and you know what when we do that mother earth earth will just regenerate she'll be here long after we're done industrial civilization itself only 200 years old is already causing the sixth mass extinction of species of the last half billion years what's that got to do with an ambulance well both nothing and everything the ambulance itself undoubtedly saves lives including my dad's yet deconstruct a single ambulance with all its plastics oils fluids copper acids glass rubber PVC minerals and steel and I'll show you how to lay waste to the very thing our lives depend upon the planet the big picture aside most of what afflicts us today cancer obesity mental illness diabetes stress autoimmune disorders health uh, heart disease along with those slow killers the meaninglessness the clock watching and loneliness are in industrial ailments we create stressful toxic unhealthy lifestyles fueled by sugar caffeine tobacco antidepressants adrenaline discontent energy drinks and fast food 
and then defend the political ideology that got us hooked on these things in the first place. Our sedentary jobs further deplete our physical, emotional, and mental well-being. But instead of honestly addressing the root cause of the illness, we exert ever more effort, energy, genius, and money trying to treat the symptoms and contain the epidemics. We developed Stockholm Syndrome, sympathizing with the very system that has economically held us hostage since the 18th century. Industrialism, along with its partner in crime, capitalism, has even persuaded us that in order to save ourselves and loved ones from the horrors of disease, we should spray every surface with chemicals, keep children's hands out of the dirt and muck, and try to sterilize our entire world. With our immune systems compromised as a result, multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical companies then sell us products to fend off what our bodies should be able to fight off naturally. In their cleverness, they have even persuaded us to pop painkillers for things that hardier generations would balk at. My own approach to health care won't satisfy the critics. The advocates of this strange thing called progress that seems to have us all more stressed and less content. Yes? Yes, Grimmy, kind of sort of sounds like a douche, but you know what? What? Um, I gotta agree, a lot of this shit, yeah, and we are defending it, and Stockholm sy Syndrome, most definitely, and we're buying into it, and you know the worst part about it, and I'm gonna go ahead, well, I might get a little bit more of this done. Um, but what, to me, what I'm reading here is that in order to have all of our gadgets and doodahs, we have signed up for all of the negative shit that came with them. Instead of going, oh, I really love this gadget, I love this goo -ga, but I don't want that shit over there. So you just, no, we'll just let that go to the wayside. And seriously, people that take Tylenol and Motrin and all that other fun stuff, do you have any idea what you're doing to your liver? Oh, man. Mmm. Oh, well. She does go on to say, I'm not trying to tell people what to do, and I've got no product to sell. I share it only because my editor tells me it's the most common online inquiry. Okay. Okay. So in so doing, I'm very aware that I, I have been blessed to be born with, without any serious long-term health issues, which that's another thing that I learned today. Um, anytime some doctor tells you that it's a genetic, like cancer is genetic, or hereditary disease, just because you have an aunt or uncle or a grandparent that may have had a certain disease, if it truly is hereditary, you have had it since the day you were born. That is the definition of a hereditary disease or a genetic disease. What, what is really going on is a genetic expression. We all have the genes to have just about any disease there is out there. It's just, do we do what is necessary for that genetic expression to express itself or to show up and start causing us problems. It was a different way of thinking for me, and it was like, wow, because, yeah, now every time you turn around, someone's going, well, did you have an aunt or uncle? Well, stop and think, how many aunts and uncles and grandparents did you have that did not have that disease? I'm more inclined to not have it, if you want to look at it like that. Oh, Apparently, the philosophy underlying her approach is that, is that of an herbalist. 
Keep the vitality in your body strong and be mindful to do it every day. When it goes out of ease and into dis-ease, use the appropriate plants, the original source of many industrial machines, um, to bring your body and mind back into balance and to restore optimal functioning or not industrial machines, industrial medicines. Yeah, because the way that industrial medicines become industrial medicines is they find a component that they can patent. And then they push that as, oh, this is way better than the natural thing, what you get in nature. No, it's not. Just You just have one component. All those components got to work together. You know, your body is always aiming for balance and health. And listening to it is one of the best things that you can do. Illness is a feedback. The sooner you heed it and restore your vitality, the less likely you are to develop a more serious problem. So, that's as far as I'm going to get because I'm just about out of time. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3. Also on all kinds of other RLM radio sites. And uh, I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Please peruse this article at your leisure or this op-ed, however you wish to look at it. And, you know, part of the reason why I like that is because I have kind of, I've done that myself. I have moved to a less industrial and more, which is part of my being out here in the boonies. And I'm really liking it. So, you know, in any case... Y'all have an absolutely amazing 